We have a new tax dodging scheme cooked up by Wall Street and the big banks to report on today. According to the Wall Street Journal, quote, Banks are making a billion dollars a year by helping wealthy investors duck taxes on stock dividends. Here's how it works. When hedge funds know that a company in which they invest is about to make a dividend payment, they ask banks they do business with to change the legal ownership of their stocks to some third party based in a country with lower tax rates on stock dividends. The third party then complies with the tax laws in that lower tax jurisdiction, and all three parties to the transaction split the tax savings and higher net revenue from the dividend payment. So do you understand the way it works? It's very simple. It's very straightforward. When it's time for you to pay your taxes, you say, oh, I, don't re I don't own that. I just, I just gave it to a third party in this lower tax place in Ireland or the Bahamas. And you act like, it's not mine. <laughs> you, you, don't, you couldn't catch me. I, it's not mine anymore. I gave it over there. And then, of course, they pay the lower tax rate and you split the money. So the scheme uh, shrinks taxes on dividends, quote, from as much as 30% of the dividend uh, payment to 10% or so, and sometimes to zero. The practice is called dividend arbitrage, and it's unfortunately... 100% legal. What rich person in the United States of America doesn't love the fact that they can get away with whatever the fuck they want to get away with because they're rich? They bought the government, so they bought loopholes, and then they exploit those loopholes. And then they laugh on their way to the bank. This is why you have a system where Mitt Romney can make $20 million in investments and pay 15% in taxes. Meanwhile, some poor construction worker makes $85,000 a year and he paid 23% in taxes. What, how does that make sense? Somebody sits on their fucking couch all day long, makes $20 million and pays 15%. Somebody's busting their ass all day long, makes $85,000, and they pay a higher tax rate. Nobody can defend that logically, but it's not about logic. It's about who bought the government. You have the rich and multinational corporations and Wall Street and big banks. They give money to the politicians to help run, run their campaigns, and then the politicians turn around and it's, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Great, you gave me money, what can I do for you? Oh, you want to do a loophole and do this uh, dividend arbitrage nonsense while we look in the other direction? By all means, go right ahead. You helped us out, we'll help you out. Now, let me ask you. Is anybody stupid enough to think that Congress couldn't stop this tomorrow if they wanted to? Of course they could, but they won't because they're bought and they're doing the bidding of those people. Now, here's the overall damage from stuff like this. Quote, American companies are holding two trillion dollars offshore to avoid paying taxes on that sum to the U.S. Treasury. Tax evasion and tax avoidance by individuals and businesses costs the U.S. about $300 billion each year. And what happens when there's such a gigantic revenue shortfall? They tax you! That's when they raise taxes on the middle class and the poor. When the corporations don't pay their fair share, when the rich don't pay their fair share, they shift the burden onto you, and guess what? You don't own the government, so they don't give a fuck if they have to jack up your tax rate, even though you can't afford it. Now, there's two more facts I want to throw out there uh, about this debate, because these, to me, are some of the all-time... We brought this up before, but these are some of the all-time secular talk, most interesting facts, because of how mind-numbing they are. Worldwide... Tax havens are a $20 trillion industry. So we're talking about people dodging taxes all over the place, okay? All these rich people in modern countries and, you know, they don't want to pay their fair share or be uh, patriotic, economic patriots. So they just say, fuck it, okay, Cayman Islands, Bahamas, Belize, wherever the fuck, Ireland, don't give a shit, just I don't want to pay anything, okay? $20 trillion industry. Imagine if we had rich people who just gave a shit about their country and they paid their taxes. I mean, the roads would be updated, the infrastructure would be updated, you know, we'd have a better social safety net, you name it. We'd have national health care, but of course they have to be greedy. And then the other fact is, 
one address, one address in the Cayman Islands has over 18,000 businesses registered to it. Well, that's not possible, right? How, how can that be? You can't have 18,000 separate businesses working in the same building, what, and there's probably multiple people per business, right, working there? No. See, this is what tax dodging is. You set up a bullshit business in the Cayman Islands, go, oh, yeah, we're headquartered over there, man. We got, like, 26 people on the payroll over there busting their ass, so we need to pay 0% taxes, not, you know, the high rate that's here, even though the rate isn't high in the U.S. They just want to pay nothing. And it's just, you know, it's a sham. Yeah, we're in the Cayman Islands, even though we're not, but it says we are, even though we're in the same building with 18,000 other businesses that all don't actually work in the Cayman Islands and are not headquartered in the Cayman Islands. It's a giant scam. It's a con game. It's a ruse. And of course, we are the ones that have to pick up the slack and we get fucked.